on Netflix, I watched License to Drive, the latest from 1988, starring Corey Haim, Corey Feldman, Heather Graham, uh, this guy Richard M Mazur, probably said that wrong, Carol King, I think is her name, shit, it's probably not Carol, Carol Kane, and shit, god damn it. You'll recognize her from Scrooge. Scrooge, duh. Anyways, uh, so th this movie's pretty shitty. Save for maybe two things. So Corey Haim is terrible. He is completely fixated on getting a driver's license. He has nightmares about it, about being in a school bus, seeing this hot babe, Heather Graham, blonde. One of her earliest roles, if not the first. Uh, really before she became much of a name around 97 with Boogie Nights, 99 with uh, Austin Powers by Shag Me. And so she's in the Ferrari, he's in the school bus. This isn't a cool thing for him. He gets out of the school bus, gets in the Ferrari, drives off. I think it's 308 uh, GTS or whatever. And so, or is it called 308i? It, it's not a great one, but they go for 80 grand now, which is quite surprising. Anyways, uh, He's studying for his driver's license. I swear, everything for the first half of this movie is driver's license. It's like, okay, we get it. A driver's license is a big deal to the kid. But the characters in this world need to have something else going for them other than Corey Haim's driver's license. They're just beating you over the head with it. He fails the written exam, but messes up the computers. And because his sister passed, and they're twins. They said, you know, how different could you be? Give me a break. Well, then he goes on to the, to the driving portion. His driving instructor is Uncle Phil, uh, James Avery. And he's one of the good things about this movie. James Avery's like, hey, I don't need a clipboard. Boom, throw that out. I got a cup of coffee. All I care about is coffee. I spill this coffee on me, you, pa uh, you fail. Coffee's still all right, you pass. It's that simple. Now go do this, parallel park that. His sister gets an easy time. Dude, the uh, instructor for her, seems to be putting the moves on her. And she's actually the, I think, younger sister of one of the guys in Stand By Me, one of the thugs. Anyways, uh, Corey Feldman has a more lively performance here. He's Corey Haims' buddy. And he's like, hey man, so you got your license to drive? Okay, we're gonna go to this diner. And it's not too different from the one in American Graffiti, to be honest with you. In fact, I, I need to look at it again. It might even be the same one. So he's like, yeah, we're gonna go there. There's gonna be babes everywhere. I don't know why all these girls about their age are hanging out at this place, but whatever. That second half of the movie, though, is a lot of mishaps. There's, it's very much Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Okay, so we have a zany time. This girl's out of the guy's league. She gets drunk soon and passes out. And now they have to go thwart all these different situations and make sure that the parents don't know that he snuck out because he's grounded. And I like the way he was grounded. The other good thing about this movie was uh, the dad, Richard Mazur. He was the guy who was in charge of the dogs and the thing. And he was really cool as the dad here. I like the way how there was this scene where Corey Haim came home with his supposed past driver's license. He's like, yeah, man, this is great. Hey, hey, uh, little one, mom made some brownies, go get some. All right, now that I got you up here, let's have some champagne. Cause you saved me a lot of money. I don't have to buy you a BMW because you blew your driver's license. You're grounded for two weeks, yeah. I thought this guy, <laughs> this was a pretty cool dad. I mean, yeah, it was, uh, there was some punishment there, but I mean, in some ways this douche deserved it. But yeah, I thought he gave a good bearded performance here. So James Avery, Richard Messer, to some regard, Corey Feldman maybe, and that's really about it. And looking at, at a lean Heather Graham, not much of a problem for me either. But nothing funny happens outside of that stuff. Uh, Cor Corey Haim just gets into trouble with the car. He's borrowed this Cadillac, it's his grandpa's, and he's borrowed his dad's car for God knows why. It doesn't even make any sense. 
Uh, it's getting wrecked, it gets messed up. A lot of weird misadventures happen. And in a lot of ways, it feels like it's trying to be Ferris Bueller's Day Off in the way that the, the comedy is handled. Though it's not handled with any kind of highbrow wink to it. It seems very slapstick. It seems, uh, you know, they're trying to make some kind of point. Like, even it, with the, uh, the lady at the driver's, at the DMV, the way she was behaving, it was trying to be like, this is your, your worst nightmare of scenario. Like, this, like, almost like she is the principal from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. But it doesn't work. Uh, it, it feels too much like a facsimile. So... They get home eventually, and they don't really have any big revelation until Corey Feldman started undressing Heather Graham and taking pictures of her, like it was the killing joke. But they don't reflect on anything. They don't talk about, hey, where's where's our life going? It's just, I'm getting driver's license. Driver's license is cool. Everybody has a driver's license. You need a driver's license? I'm getting driver's license. I'm going on a date with this chick. Does she even have a character? Honestly, no. She used Corey Haim to go get a ride to see her former boyfriend and then breaks up with him or some shit and then agrees to go on a date with Corey Haim again it's like shouldn't Corey Haim have learned something here maybe your dream girl isn't everything she, you thought she would be like it, it, doesn't, it doesn't honestly make any sense so then at the end of the movie the mom is pregnant and they have to hurry to the hospital. But uh, the Cadillac's all beat up. Corey Haim has to like stunt and drive it there. They get to the hospital. Dad says, you know what? That wasn't some bad driving there. You know, I might be able to forgive some of this. But then an I-beam falls on the car and breaks it. And I'm thinking, okay, that's good. And then you be like, oh, hey, it was fine, but that I-beam screwed it up. Where's the insurance from the construction company for your mistake? Everything solved, right? That would have made sense. Nope. Instead, the car still smashed. It's like that was never covered. When Grandpa comes home, he's like, Oh, hey, that's hilarious because I messed up your car too. Why did he trade cars? He came to their place to borrow their car for... I don't understand. This wasn't an awesome Cadillac. It was a kind of a shitty 70s Cadillac. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it should have been remedied. To make matters even worse, Heather Graham shows up in the movie. All of a sudden, she's got like a Volkswagen Cabrio. So she's got like a Golf convertible that she couldn't drive earlier. And she gives Corey Haim the keys and he takes off. And then it plays the best song in the movie. Get out of my dreams. Get in the backseat, baby. Get in my car. Beep, beep, yeah. But Billy Ocean... So other than that, we have shitty music throughout the movie, too. I, I'm honestly, I'm struggling to give this two out of four stars.